Hey guys, welcome to the Titanium Vault. I'm your host, RJ Bates III, and today is going to be an absolute banger because I'm talking to a man that has really changed the trajectory of Titanium Investments. Uh, met Gene back in 2021 uh, after I won the, the Closures Olympics. We had talked previously, but that was really when our relationship kind of took off and uh, we, we really were one of the early users of Speed to Lead in the, the PPL model. Um, I remember doing my first closure show um, with them and, and just being like, man, this is so much easier than what we're doing with our uh, outbound marketing, with texting and cold calling. Um, so, Mr. Blinkoff, how are you doing today? What's going on, RJ? Doing very well. Incredible yeah, to be here, man. Very cool uh, to be here. Well, I appreciate you being here, man. And uh, so, Gene, you're in uh, you're in Boston right now. Is that correct? Correct, right now. Yeah. Yeah, but you're not. You don't. You're not normally in the state. So, tell everybody a little bit about where is Speed Elite actually based out of, and where do you where do you live? Yeah. So, first of all, RJ, thank you for the thank you for the introduction. You you, you also changed the tra trajectory, and has been a trajectory of, of my own career. So so I, I'll always. I always appreciate that and never forget about that, man. Yeah, <laughs> it's man. been it's been a great it's been a great friendship and partnership. But um, yeah, so uh, Speed to Lead is well, it, we're we're an American company, right? We're we're headquartered in in US and in yeah. uh, in Delaware. But um, we've got a kind of a crazy story of how we came about. I've got a crazy story, and so to Speed to Lead, because we were started actually when I was living in Ukraine. Right. So a few years ago, I had a, I used to own a video company and uh, in, here in Boston, it was called Drone Boston. And uh, I was like, you know, one of the top three guys here that was doing real estate videos for um, real estate agents with drones, like just when drones kind of came about, you know, right. and I was like my I was working at IBM before that. I was just looking for something, dude, something out of the cubicle. And uh, this like. X gave me this drone for as a gift and I started flying. I'm like, dude, this is cool. And I bought like the professional one. And then I'm like, all right, you know what? This is, this is way cool. Like I can be above, take pictures. Like this is cool, kind of creative. And then I started like all my lunch breaks, all my evenings after work, I would just go and like practice to be better at this thing. And so start eventually started this business, but then I started filming a bunch and, um, uh, I start, you know, do like four listings in one day and then you got to go edit them. And so I'm like, whoa, I just spent a night editing. I haven't slept and I got in the morning. I got to go film more. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, this is crazy. And so and I had this guy from Ukraine that reached out to me, Ivan, um, not Ivan that, that I'm working with now, but um, uh, a different Ivan, Ivan Pryden. And so he reached out to me. He's like, hey, we do these edits and stuff. So long story short, I hired them. They started editing in Ukraine and they did this, such a good job. Like we became basically like number one in Boston and the listing videos, number one, number two. And so at some point I was like, all right, you know what? I'm going on a trip with my parents to Europe. Let me stop by in Ukraine because I want to see these guys. You know, I have half of my family is, is uh, ethnically Ukrainian. And so I'm like, let's do that. Let's go there. So I go there hang out with these guys. We take them to, actually, we, we, we took, we went to Dubai for a couple of days, like took them on a little trip just to thank them for, for, for good work. Um, and then I was sitting in Ukraine one day, I was super bored and I like went on Tinder and, uh, basically met my wife. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so I started, you know, kind of going back and forth from Ukraine, you know, dating and stuff like that. Uh, then I moved to Ukraine basically full time, like we moved in together, got married. And uh, at that point, I was doing ads as an agency, right? So we were just an agency, you know, PPC agency doing leads done done for you lead generation and stuff. Uh, and we got we started making like quite a bit of money with the agency. And so I'm like, you know what, agency is cool. We have like 80 customers right now. And like quite a bit of staff it was like 10 people, I think. Well, at that point, it felt like quite a bit. And I'm like, but you know what? Taking this to 500 clients would be a freaking nightmare. It would be like 50 people will have to have. So let's work on a model. Let's like let's let's not buy a bunch of stupid shit with the money right now. 
let's 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 invest some money in like into software because I'm like I'm a software guy. I used to spend all this time at startups at IBM and all that. And Ukraine's got so many software engineers. It's crazy, right? Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, this is this is happening. And so and we thought about it like what's the what's a way to democratize PPC for people to where somebody can go instead of going and spinning up a campaign, spinning up a website, spinning up a landing page, filming ads or writing good copy. Like let's do that for them and post the lead there and let them buy it. Okay? And so we did that. Put a freaking dirty, dirty product together. The first version of Speed to Lead was like a nightmare. And you could also, we also let sellers actually like write their little story in there. And some right. of them would just go and write ridiculous stuff. Some of them would write like paragraphs about what's going on with them. And I was like, all right, this, this, this. <laughs> but eventually we improved it, right? And so, and that's how, uh, that's how Speed to Lead was born. And uh, we've just been growing 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 then we started like doing you know the, the big growth came when we started doing shows when we started doing shows you know we did um so after the closes olympics we did um um we did, i basically kind of growth hacked closes olympics and when i bought a ticket you know i was in the chat there with everybody in the live and i'm like well 300 real estate investors in here I've got all these leads, you know, we're trying to sell them, we're trying to get users and stuff like that, spending money every day on ad spend. I'm like, hey, close this Olympics after party on this YouTube channel right here. Come over. Okay. So a bunch of people actually came over. We did like a, our first basic show. And um, at that point, Lee, and that's how we met Liam. Liam was one of the people there. And at that point, he was like, he wasn't even showing his face on the camera. Um, <laughs> and so, Liam came, and then I think we made one of the best decisions is like Liam came, and then we're like, hey, let's approach RJ with this thing. Yep. And so we approached RJ, and the rest is history, man. We like closers cage matches, never done before, like stuff, you know, like it's only been done at closers Olympics, but we kind of democratize, right? Like with you. Yep. Closers well, it's the funny closers. how that that how that came about, right? You, so you guys reached out to me and you said, hey. We've, we've got to get the King Closer on the Closer Show, right? Because that's what y'all were calling it, and which was brilliant. And so you brought me on for one episode. And, you know, we went live an hour and a half, two hours, calling leads. I got a, a signed contract on it. And it was like everyone was excited. There was a couple hundred people watching. And then afterwards, what happened on my side was is that in 2020, in the Closers Olympics, everyone was on my side because I lost. And everyone was like, dude, you should have won. You got robbed. But then I go and win. And I thought, oh, man, this is going to blow up. And everyone's going to be so excited for me because everyone for the past year had been saying, you should have won. And then what came out of the woodworks was is I was getting all these DMs that were like, oh, dude, you're not that good of a closer. I could have beaten you. And I was like, what is happening right here? And so that's where we came up with the idea of like, all right, listen, why do people like the Closers Olympics? It brings a competition atmosphere. So it was like, let's do these closer cage matches. Mm -hmm. I think Liam was the one that actually came up with that title. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and of course, the first one we ever had to do was between me and Aaron Bevins because of the trash talk and everything like that. Dude, do you remember we did that on December 23rd? Yeah. The, the night before Christmas Eve. And dude, we were we were struggling to get people to answer the phone because we did it like at nighttime. I mean, it was like I think we started like 3, 4 p.m. Uh, but man, we had some really quality conversations. And dude, I think we I I think that video has like 10,000 views on my channel. I think y'all's has a couple thousand views on it. Uh, we had more live viewers than than the Olympics had. Yes, I mean we it was great. Like, yeah, we had like four hundred people watching it live on yeah on like on basically almost almost on Christmas Eve. And and it was such a a cool moment to be a part of because it was the first I'd done so many lives doing SMS and and you know getting my teeth kicked in where this was like boom I'll take that lead right there. And then I'm dialing, and then every time a seller answered, it was like we weren't having a conversation about how did you get my information or 
why would I want to talk to you? It was just about, yes, I want to sell. How much do you want? Let's talk about it and see if it's a good deal. Uh, that's where it really took off. And then from there, we actually started using Speed Elite inside of our business. And, and things have just been crazy for us ever since, man. Uh, when you came up with this idea for Speed Elite, uh, I have to ask, because I've, I've said this before, it's one of the most brilliant names of all time. Who actually came up with the name Speed to Lead? I'll tell you, man, and, and no, probably nobody knows this at this point, but the name, so the name was actually originally, uh, the, uh, one of our team members, we had a team member, Veronica, and she thought that we should name it that because that's what we used to put on every single email that notified our agency customers about a lead. It was like, speed to lead, you've got a new lead. But I took that from Chris Rude. Uh, so Chris Rude was my first mentor, right? When I was working at IBM, I, I bought a coaching program of his, bought it on a corporate IBM credit card, didn't have the cash <laughs> to buy it, bought it on a credit card, bro. Um, got, got, yeah. So I got a sales guy to do like two payments and I bought it on a corporate credit card. Thanks IBM. Um, and so, I mean, I paid for it after, but right, <laughs> that was like the definition of pulling the trigger, man. So yeah, anyone gives me a price objection ever. I'm like, yeah, try doing that. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> and so, um, and he, he always had this thing. He has these like simple, funny, like little silly things like skills get the deals, right? Sp speed to lead. And so that's that's where I took it from. <laughs> Dude, I, it's one of the best names I've ever seen. Uh, I, I'm a, I love branding. Uh, and, and when you think about it, it's like even inside of your name, and as much as I've been talking about speed to lead for years now, I still get people that ask me like, all right, well, say the lead comes in. I mean, how quickly do I need to call it? And I'm like, it's in the name. Speed the lead. Like, dude, if, when the lead comes in, they're on the site right there. Call them immediately before they go to another site. They're gonna go, uh, they're gonna go find someone to buy their house. That's what they're doing. That's what they're working on right now. Uh, so I've always loved the name. I will say sometimes it is a, a, a tongue twister, though, when I'm like. You know, when you buy these speed to lead leads, because you have to say lead twice, you know? <laughs> the, yeah, so so when we, Liam, Liam's been saying for, for years now to, to like, just, just call them speed to leads. Just get everybody to call them speed to leads. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that makes sense. I, I should do that, but it just comes out speed to lead leads, you know? So, uh, but when, when you came up with it, it was originally just a marketplace, right? Was that... Did you always know that you were going to transition to other offerings or was, was your plan just to stick with the marketplace? So, so the plan initially was basically, all right, let's get people. The, the mission and the mission to this day is to allow somebody to get their next customer within five minutes of signing up. And the mission to this day is that. And that's something that we really try to try to always keep that in there. That like you can log in or your first time encounter speed to lead and boom, in five minutes, you're already talking to somebody. Right. And so, yeah, and that was the first the first idea. But then we quickly realized that, OK, so that's a that's a cool way for somebody to experience the platform, encounter the platform the first time. Uh, but then there's quite a bit of folks that wanted, uh, you know, they're like, OK, well. I'm a busy guy, right? Maybe I got a job. Maybe I actually I've got, I need a lot of leads. And so quickly realized that there's demand for people that want to automate that. And so that's what we launched fixed price mode. Uh, it used to, it used to just be called auto buy, but then we right. figured like, you know what, let's fix the price so people can expect which price they're getting instead of, cause it used the price on auto buy used to jump all the time. You didn't know what you're right. getting. And that, um, so, yeah, we, and, and that actually accounts for more than half of our sales, like just around just around half. So walk me through what is fixed price mode. So if I'm I'm signing up for speed to lead, that means my my price is fixed. And I tell you what locations I'm willing to buy deals in. Yeah. So the so fixed price mode, you define which counties you want leads in you define which parameters you want the leads to have. So if you if you don't want 
the if you want if you don't want downsizing leads, you check that box off, uh, or you uncheck that box. If you don't want uh, things where foundation has issues and the seller listed that, you don't want to deal with those. Uncheck that box. If you don't want houses that are newer than 2000, you uncheck those boxes like 2000, 2010, and 2010 and beyond. You uncheck those boxes. So you basically customize like what's a perfect lead for you. We tell you what the price for that lead is. And that price is higher than like, let's say, a coupon club lead or something because you're getting the lead instantly and you're getting the lead exclusive. So that lead will never be resold to anybody again until unless the owner changes on that address right uh, so so that's the that's the, basically the rule so that address will not be resold until the owner changes on it right uh and so you're you, and, and you're paying and, and you're paying a price that would be comparable to you running your own local campaign on google uh probably even less because if you'd have to be very very good marketer to run a local campaign in phoenix right or in, or in la to get the prices that we that we uh, that we sell them for, because we obviously, you know, we buy them in bulk, so we get better pricing from Google and from YouTube and all these other platforms. But yeah, fixed price. You customize your perfect lead, set it on autopilot. You set a budget, and then boom, they go to your CRM. They go to your speed to lead CRM to your own CRM. We integrate it, uh, and then but they're still refundable. Like if there's an issue with any lead, we do have a quality control team that quickly does a bunch of checks um before publishing the lead to you but uh they're still refundable if there's an issue a lead goes dark changes their mind we still refund those and on that the fixed price mode is the price dependent upon certain um counties like for example like you know dallas county is going to be a lot more hot than say like you know a, a random county in west texas does it does it change the price based off of the counties so right now it doesn't but soon there will be some adjustments based like some some counties will get cheaper um some kind of will get cheaper uh but right now more it more so depends on like the more budget you have the cheaper that price is the more uh the more parameters you have the more customizing of the lead that you do uh, the price actually goes up a little bit for 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 when you're customizing it. Um, if you set a wide area, if you got like counties from across the country, your price is going to be lower because we're getting it for lower from you know social networks and from Google's and YouTube's. So we're like, all right, let's pass those savings onto the customer and and also make it cheaper for them. So right. you know we're just trying to capture a little profit in the middle um, and allow our customers not to deal with the campaigns and all that stuff as much as we can right i still we're, we're trying to get we're all trying to get the volumes up yeah. um but uh, that's the mission is to is to you know marketing doing your own lead generation marketing stinks so you, just, you know one of the but, things gene for me is is as a business owner when i have to rely on a third party business like yourself to generate mm -hmm. leads for me one of the biggest concerns that I always have is about your sustainability as a business, because mm. I'm essentially relying on speed to lead to generate leads for me and my, my business. I just did a live yesterday. I said the five tools of being a successful oh, wholesaler. What, what's number one lead gen without lead gen. Guess what? You can't do acquisitions. Can't cop an underwrite. You can't dispo. And you, you got not the TC. So it all starts. Dude, with that was a cool title, by the way. I was like, I was really enticed. Like, what does he mean? Like, what tools? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I love that, uh, that, you know, hey, Legion is so important, but I'm relying on you. So one of the things that you did that really like, and it, it's people are probably going to look at this and like, oh, RJ, you're being a kiss ass or whatever. Well, I'm not because uh, this is how my brain works. As an entrepreneur, one of the things that you came out and you did early on was is you added premium mode. Uh, and fixed price mode, uh, coupon club, you added some different things that were essentially subscription model, residual income for speed to lead. And the thing that I loved about that was, is I was like, okay, for $89, I can sign up for premium mode. And now I get to see additional information about a lead before I choose to buy it or not. And it was mm -hmm. vital information. It was the size of the house, the repairs that are needed, Right. What type of house is it? Is it a condo? 
because I don't want a condo, but if it's a single family home, that makes a big difference, right? Um, and for me, I saw that and I said, dude, this is really intelligent because now if he gets a solid amount of people buying this premium mode, this allows me to feel more confident in the sustainability of speed to lead. Talk about the decision that you made there and kind of how different that is from almost every other PPL provider out there. No one else is really doing these things that you've done. And I'm, I'm assuming you're a pretty creative guy. Those are, those are like your little brainchilds that you're coming up with there, right? Well, I'm, I, I would downplay my creativity. I'm a, I'm a freaking learning guy. I'm, I'm reading and I'm reading every day, man. And I'm watching every day. Like I'm every minute that's that I have free. It, I'm, I'm consuming information from sources that, that I, you know, respect somewhat. Um, or like somewhat meaning like sometimes I'll read someone new that I don't know, but right. that's, that's where I, cause so, so for example, if you like taking the pre the, the subscription part of it, here's the thing. So we were, we were encountering a problem cause we, we didn't always have premium. And so we were like, all right, we're looking at this customer on, on speed to lead and they've got an incredible success story. So the guy bought like, you know, I, I don't remember exactly. This was two, two years ago, but let's say it was like three to 10 leads close the deal. Cause we can, you know, we, we see the stats inside of the, our, our, our lead statuses, close the deal. We call them and we're like, yeah, dude, make like 20 grand. It was awesome. We're like sweet. Cool. So we market in CRM, you know, success story. And then we look back and we're like, guys, not buying leads. What's up? And so we're like, all right, you know what? So we, we started thinking like, all right, people get like a little bit of success. And we do this all the time. I think entrepreneurs do this all the freaking time. Mm -hmm. Is you do something that works, but then you stop doing it because you're so used to this hamster wheel where you're looking for the new thing. You're looking for the thing that gets a little traction. And so sometimes we in marketing, especially, we'll we'll do a successful thing and then we're we'll A B test ourselves out of it and forget that that thing was making us successful. And so we're like, all right, that's not cool because he's successful where we can ethically, you know, say that this customer should keep buying from us because they've made money and they'll make more like it's in their best interest. And so I started reading, like, how do we, you know, how to reduce churn? How do we, re how do, how do get people to keep coming back? And so it's funny because like what, what I found out from the subscription coach that subscriptions actually get uh actually reduce churn because a person is is somehow more committed to the platform when there's a subscription going they've got that little you know zinger in the back of their head that's like hey you're paying for this go and check what's yep. going on there like you're, you're paying for this you, you paid three bucks for this today go and see what's up there maybe you can get a little benefit out of it back get your roi get your roi and that was one of the that was one of the reasons to to to, to put that in there uh and of course like you know, we, we saw that, like, all right, there's certain parameters of leads that people really care about. Um, so, you know what? Let's let's kind of a little bit future proof our sustainability. And uh, like you said, uh, and introduce that. And so but as far as the sustainability, that's a great question. As far as a platform being here today or not being there tomorrow. In fact, I always want I always forget to ask you about Propelio, like whatever happened to that, to that. Yeah, to, I mean, to phenomenon. that's a great example. I. Bro, facts of the matter is, Propelio was uh, the tool that I like to use for nationwide comping during the initial 50-day challenge in 2020. And then mm -hmm. just one day, I couldn't comp, and it said, we're working on it. And then the next thing you know, it was, we lost MLS access. We have problems. We're shutting down all these states. And guess what? It was gone. That's what, that's what, that is a perfect example. Now, I think they're coming back, and I've heard that the tool's bigger, better, and better, but here's the thing. As a business owner, bro, what was I supposed to do for those two years that it just disappeared? Mm -hmm. That's why I, it's like I care about the health of the, the vendors that I'm using, right? Why do I go out and I talk about speed to lead? Well, the fact of the matter is I need people to use speed to lead because I can't buy enough leads to sustain speed to leads entire business. Right. 
Um, right. and, and I want Speed Lead to succeed because it helps me succeed. And yeah, I mean, there's affiliate marketing and you pay me some money on that, but bro, this is not, you're not paying me life-changing money. It's not, it's not enough money to sustain what I'm making on wholesaling, right? Uh, and so it's more about the fact that I need Speed Lead here 10 years from now. Um, and, and I want to succeed, so I don't have to worry about that. That's why I brought that up, man. Um, yeah, that's, that's a, a great that's, example that's a, of Rebellio. Yeah, that's a that's a great one because like, just, and and we're we're big on it. I mean, we had to we we had a a war happen in Ukraine, and and I hold I woke I woke up in Kiev that morning, and and literally went started driving to to so we lived a couple hours away from um, the capital. I'm driving away from the capital, and there's tanks on the road. I'm bro, I, yeah. I saw the post on Facebook. That was insane. <laughs> I was worried about you, bro. I, I, I remember reached out to you. I was worried like, about me too. I was like, are you okay, dude? You're posting videos of tanks passing you. I mean, uh, what, how scary was that? That So I woke up. Um, I woke up at like 5 a.m. that morning, and I was like, way too early. Go back to bed. But it already happened by then. It, was, it happened. At, it started at 4 a.m., and so I woke up at five, already happened. I went back to bed, woke up at like eight, you know, went outside and I see like all this activity, like people running around with like shopping bags and stuff like that with like groceries. I'm like, what was it Thursday morning? I think it was. I'm like, this is weird, strange. So I get in my car and my phone died. My phone died while I was sleeping. I get, and, and, and I was at a hotel because I was staying in the Capitol uh, for one day. We just had our like team get together. Uh, right. We did, you did these quarterly get-togethers, went bowling and all this stuff. And so I'm like, turn on my phone, see all these missed calls from my wife. I'm like, what's going on? Uh, and then I look at the news and like Putin started the war. I'm like, oh shit. I'm like, oh shit. And then I read and then I'm re I'm re I keep reading, and they're like 40 something missiles already hit the country and more are coming. And I'm like, dude, I'm in the capital right now. This is like where they're coming. All right, I gotta right. get out of here. And so I start driving, and um, I have my windows rolled down, uh, just smoking a butt. Had my windows rolled down, and um, driving to see my co-founder because I had I actually brought cat. We knew that the war might happen, like we knew it might happen. So I brought um, I brought some cash for like a little bit of payroll. I think I brought like thirty grand back from us actually the, the the border guards freaking caught me with it and had to pay them 600 dollars a bribe just to freaking get the cash in that was kind of annoying 600 yeah. bucks gone but and so i'm like i drive to my co-founder and i'm like here's a little cash to you know if you need it we might not see each other for a while who knows like if you if you can pay people banks might shut down banking system might shut down we never know Let's keep make sure, like, because our business is in U.S. Nobody gives a right. fuck right. that this shit happening in Ukraine. So, like, if you need to pay people, here's you know, here's here's ten G's or whatever. Um, pay people with with cash if you can. Like, if you see somebody, I see somebody, I'll pay them. So, okay. And but on the way to driving him, I see, I hear this freaking explosion. I hear this like thunder. And there's no lightning, and that's that's how I would describe it. Like, there's no lightning, but you hear this like thunder thing, and I'm like, shit, roll the windows up, <laughs> and I'm like, you got to get out of here, buddy. And so I start, I just booked ass from there, and 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 while I was while I was driving away, there's tanks moving into the city to to basically protect the city. And I let me tell you, man, when you're sitting in the car and you're driving your 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 your, hey, I, I, it was a big car. But you're driving your big, big uh, rover, and there's a guy, there's four tanks, and he's sitting on top of the tank like this, you know, and he's chilling, and he's looking at you, and he's got, and, and there's there's the tank gun, and he's yeah. got a gun, and he's looking at you, and you, and I'm like, and I looked at him for a second, I'm like, just look the fuck away, <laughs> don't, 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 don't make eye contact. That was like, because I'm not, you know, that might be the only time in, in my life I was like, do not make eye contact with that man. <laughs> I mean, what, was, when you're going through something like that, man, I mean, first of all, you're, you're a dad, right? 
your yeah. your your I was, husband. A dad, I was a dad at that point already. So yeah, your yeah. dad, your husband, your business owner, and then also you're you're by yourself. I mean, you're you're worried. Um, I mean, where's your mind going in, during that moment of like? Are you thinking about speed delete? Are you thinking about just getting to your family? Are you worried about your family? Or were, were you pretty sure that they were safe? I mean, where's your mind yeah, going? Sure. That? No, the first the first thing was it was, I will the first thing was like get figure out what what's going on with the with the wife and the baby. Uh and they they were in a town uh in a city where we lived in a couple couple of hours away. So the first thing was like, all right. Go to the go to your grandmother's house. It's in the country, you know. The countryside ain't getting bombed. There's no like military uh, military infrastructure or energy infrastructure there or anything like that. Less likely to get bombed. Although at that point, stuff was missing where it was supposed to go. Planes were getting shot down. Like Russian planes were getting shot down, and they were like, you know, a plane, a plane gets hit. That thing's still right. flying somewhere, and it's falling somewhere because yeah. the, the guy ejected out of it or or got killed, and then you know, whatever. And so, um, that was the first thought, like get to the family, get to the family, you know, but, but I did drop off some money on, on the way there to, 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 to my co-founder. Um, but that was the whole thing. And then once I got there, once we're in the country, you know, that at that point and her, her grandmother's house had such bad reception. So I had to drive out to this hill. It was like, it was kind of like, it's just in the Ukrainian country. And so I had to drive out to this hill where I get cell reception. We do these conference calls. And and at that point, once the family was safe, um, it was just like, let's avoid any downtime. How can we avoid any downtime? And we didn't, we did not have like a day even that we didn't operate or had to pause or shut down. And that's like big props to that whole team. Um, even some of the members from the, of the team that moved on that we, that, that were with us back then, um, I think that was a monumental that 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 whole thing carried us through a whole year. That the fact that we like managed out of that crisis, I was using that to motivate our team the whole year after. Now it, right now it's not as you know we're finding new ways to motivate people. Right, right. It worked. It worked real well for for. A, for a Dude, I I have to say as as a client, I mean when I saw, I mean obviously we're friends on Facebook, um, so I, I knew what was going on. Obviously, when the news broke here in the United States, the first thing that popped in my mind was like, oh, my God, uh, you know, is Gene okay? Then I saw your post on Facebook. Then it was like, oh, oh my God, is he really okay? Uh, I was messaging <laughs> you on WhatsApp like, bro, why are you posting videos of tanks? Like, get the fuck out of there. What are you doing? And we 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 joke about you being a crazy man, but that was the first time I was like, okay, no, he, he might actually be crazy. <laughs> um, but man, we, we never saw any, any dip, you know, there was never a, like speed lead is, is postponing or pausing any leads that, that never happened. Um, so kudos to you, man, and your system and your team, like you said, um, you guys really carried through there. Um, yeah, it's so a, the, it's really the team. Yeah. The team just did, did it all. So that was, that was cool. That was awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, Even that post about- that I made, the, the post that I made with the tanks, that post was like focused on like we don't have any downtime. Everything's okay. Come back, come, come and buy leads. You want to help us? Don't send money. Pick up, pick up an affiliate code and tell your friends about it. That's how you can. Right. Help. <laughs> exactly. Well, let's talk about the the new thing that you guys are are working on. And you know, you and I have had conversations about this. And you're what you're really trying to accomplish with Speed Elite is kind of make it that one stop shop across the board where it's like as a wholesaler. Or as just a, a real estate investor, you can come in and you can say, hey, I want my leads. Um, so many different options to buy those leads. But now you've added a Dispo tool and it's new. Talk about that and, and what what do you get inside of this Dispo tool? Yeah, so we we had a bunch of customers that came to us and are, were, were basically like, all right, well, there's a deal here that I closed in uh you know in a town that's like thirty thousand people um you know and it's a it's a you know it's a regular wholesale contract uh you know it's not like a novation or or any power of attorney or anything like that and so they're like do you guys have any like idea on like dispoing this thing and we're, we're looking at this person they're like not in any position to 
purchasing these expensive tools and stuff. And I, you know, the tool, the tool, the tools that are out there for Dispo are incredible. Okay, let me just say that. Yeah. And so we're like, all right, well, we 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 kind of have a responsibility here to help these people. And so it's, at, at at first we we just basically we worked really hard to buy a bunch of buyers lists, buy them, source them, trade them with other people, you know, all kinds, all, all, all that type of stuff. And we got a pretty sizable chunk at that point. And we would just give a person a list, you know, but then we started like thinking about it. You know what, what, what can we do? So a person doesn't have to leave the platform to, to get a lot of stuff done. So they can like spend a couple hours on speed to lead and feel super productive. What can we do to, to 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 give people a couple of hours of productive time in their day? That's that was kind of the mission, and and we're still on that mission. We we're still not not there yet. But like you know what, sit down for a couple hours, be productive with our platform, right? And so, and that's why we're you know right now you can buy leads and they'll go to your you know speed to lead CRM. This quarter. Um, you'll be able to add your own leads there if you want, right? We're not going to compete with CRMs. We're not going to try to build out, you know, a go high level. Right. Like we can't, that's that's an incredible platform. You can't compete with it. Uh, but the little stuff, the the bare bones that people need, we're going to we're gonna have it in there. Um, and so the, 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 you know, so you put your leads in a CRM and now the Dispo tool. So, you know, it's a mar- it's a marketplace where you can post your property, and it's a big, B- we call it the BFD, the big flipping database. Um, it's a it's a big BFD of buyers that's got you know millions of buyers, and and the millions of buyers thing is, you know, it sounds cool, but tell you like m- many people know, there's only like a hundred thousand people that are actually right super active, right, or or, right. or active, and so and so we've got all those on there their contact information. So you can do email blasts right from speed to lead. You can download that list and do your own call campaign. You can see when a buyer has checked out your property, has checked out your listing. You can see how many pictures they clicked and all that stuff. Um, and, and, and so, and you can get the, the software monthly. You, we're not requiring people to, to do the whole year because we're, you know, our goal is not, we, whenever we make our goal revenue uh, only, we, we 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 see being a software company being a service provider we see we see like bad things happen when we make our goal let's make this helpful and help people make money and make it accessible so more so maximum amount of people use it that's when we see progress right and so and that's why we're like yeah we're not gonna we don't need to charge for a whole year um, right and so even though that's like a you know there's a concern that somebody I think the concern there is that somebody that might come in and download a bunch of buyers. Uh, but um, I think anyone that's worked with with any of these tools, with any of these dispo tools, will, will understand that like having the having the buyers list is not the only problem there. Yeah, I mean, listen, I I was just talking about this yesterday during that five tool live, where you know when I got the dispositions, um, I said you know the way the the format of the the live was is you got to have your system and then you got to have your process. And so I talked about InvestorLift being the tool that we use for dispositions. I brought up, hey, Speed Elite is just now adding a dispo tool. We look forward to looking into it. But at the end of the day, the system is only as good as the process that you create around it. And it's not that damn list. The list That list exists on PropStream and Batch, and it's always existed yep. there. Yep. I mean, bro, I mean, I, I did a live with uh, – with Burton over at PropStream, and he was like, here's how you find your buyers. You just go right here. You search cash buyers past 12 months, and they bought three or more houses. He's like, okay, there you yeah. go. There's your, there's your investors. Skip, trace exactly. it, call them. But that's the problem. Now you have to skip, skip, trace it, call them. You already have all that information in there and, and providing a place for them to easily. Listen, dispositions is no different than acquisitions. You got to do marketing. It's still and sales, you, yeah. You got to do sales. It's the same thing. So uh, I, I love that that you you've added this on to the speed elite. How much are you going to be charging for that uh, per month? Uh, it's two ninety nine per month. Or so, if you, there is an option to get it for a year, uh, and that's significantly cheaper per month. Right. So the, the per year, I think it's like one one seventy per month or something. 
Um, so, so let's talk about this real quick because, uh, listen, I've been using you guys since, you know, late 2021. There's a lot of tools, a lot of competitors, right, uh, that have come out. You guys are, are constantly innovating, making your product better. How much are you concerned about competitors coming out and trying to compete with Speed Lead? And how much do you not think about that on a daily basis? Yeah. I So I used to be kind of, I used to be very competition agnostic in, in my previous work with our agency when we had it, uh, you know, when we were really focused on the agency where with my video business, I would just try to be like the most expensive thing. Uh, with leads for sale, that's not really, especially with 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 our um, customers. Like, are, they're so discount con- conscious, right? You're trying to find houses for a discount, so of course, you, like wholesalers are, real estate wholesalers are 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 always trying out there trying to get deals, you know. And and I kind of love it because you you hang out with these people, like you, you hang out with Chris Rude, and he'll show you a freaking collectible truck that he bought for like 40% retail, right? 40% retail. And, and, and you're like, yeah, cause this guy is like, he's all about getting a good deal on, on anything in his life, in his life. So, and that really works with, with, with the lead game too. And so we're, what we, what we have a try to maintain a careful balance of, you know, there's, there's the VIP customers that, are not so price conscious that are more conscious of like getting the exact type of leads that they want and the folks that are price conscious and for the folks that are price conscious we played with a lot of different models and um we came out with the with the coupon club model that's barely profitable for us <laughs> but i think the, fa- the the amount of impact that created uh and the amount of deals that people closed on it for 29 bucks a lead, you know, and depending on when you're hearing about this, we, we may have to raise it because it's barely profitable. Um, but, you know, hopefully, hopefully we don't have to raise it. And so that's, that, that's the careful balance that we try to maintain. As far as competition, it's, um, I, I, I think about it and I don't because you, 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 if you think about it all the time, you, you're going to always be in reactive mode. I, I try to get myself out of it. And, and think about the customers instead of the of the of the competitors. How do I? How can I get like? How can I get the customer a better experience? How can I get the customer another feature, another thingy, um, to 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 get you know like right now we we added a thing where, you know, we're getting these buyers traffic on the platform, and they're they're right. also going to go and check out Speed to Lead, and so some people are actually worried like well what if my what if buyers are going to start going buying leads and 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 cut me out I'm like you don't worry your your cash bars are not going to sit there and negotiate with a with a with a seller for 3 hours they're not that they're not cut out for that the dentist These is not buyers cut out already knew about direct to seller marketing they're choosing not to do it because they're busy with what else if they're buying from wholesalers they're going to continue to buy from wholesalers i mean that's that's the facts yeah. Um, so I, I, I would never worry about that. What, what I want to know is though, real talk, mm-hmm. like when you see like me, you know, me and you, we, we've been doing this for a while now. Yeah. I, does it bother you when I sit here and I'm like, Hey, I, I got this lead from lead Zolo or, Hey, I closed this many deals from lead Zolo. Does that bother you? Or are you like, no, I'm not worried. Cause I also know how many deals he got for speed to lead. No, no, it do, it doesn't bother me. I, it did bother me at first, and I and I tried to figure it out, and I'm like, okay, let's look at the let's look at the space of big influencers. Can I control? Can I control what they promote or 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 not? No, I cannot control it. Why the fuck worry about it? Like, yeah, that's that's one part of it. Um, but yeah, at first it was like, oh another you know another thing we got to worry about or, or whatever <laughs> but Gene, but, here here's the thing here the reason why i brought this up it was for a reason yeah, because yeah i i sit here and i've thought about this for a while i'm a i am loyal to a fault like i i i remember when lead zolo approached me it was like dude 
I, I've got a relationship with Gene and like, you know, we've got all this stuff that we do with Speed to Lead. Speed to Lead has been a part of our business. And, and like the vast majority of our conversation revolved around you and, and your business. And uh, that that's my loyalty, right? Here's what I've, I've realized. Pardon the disruption. By the way, tomorrow, last episode ever of Pardon the Disruption, we are going to have something that replaces it. A little bit different style. But what that has given me over the past two years of doing that is, is I get to sit down with three of my competitors, Steve Train, Chris Jefferson, Leon, Eric, whoever it is. I get to hear their thoughts and what they're doing inside of their business. And what I've realized is, is that when I disagree with something that they say or that they're doing, it makes me so much better at what I am doing. And I become more passionate about my message and my person, my, my purpose and my vision. And what I've seen is, is that there are times where when competition breeds excellence out of the, the top notch people, I've seen speed to lead. I've seen you, Gene, step your game up with competition coming into the, the marketplace. And one of the worst things that can ever happen is when competition dies inside of an economic cli a climate. Because essentially, the person who owns the monopoly says, what does this mean? I jack the prices up and my service goes down because I have no competition to worry about. Yeah. And so for me, what I've seen is, is the more that come along inside of this, the better it's going to be because the ones that are truly great at this, and I think you are great at this, step their game up and come up with innovative ideas to make this even better. And, and that's, for me, what I've seen you guys do, and that's why I've always wanted to be aligned with Speed to Lead and you uh, because I've seen you constantly working to get better. Whereas I don't know if some of these competitors that are coming out I don't know if they're going to be here in 2025, 2026, but I do know Speed Lead's going to be here because of the sustainability that I've seen you build and also because of the innovation that I've seen your company come out with. So that's, you know, what? That, that's a great, that's a great point. The fact that you mentioned that like you're sitting there with your competitors and talking, that's, that's actually, I've never, I've never looked at it that way. Cause in, you think about it like, yeah, you've got, you guys have competing offers. And Bro, that's, me, that's me, me, Steve, and, and CJ specifically. People have to make a decision. I got $5,000. I'm going to give to either CJ, Steve, or RJ. And they're watching yeah. a podcast with all three of us. That's I crazy. Mean, it, we should we should do that in PPL. <laughs> right? But uh, Gene, here's a here's a classic example of this, okay? We had a question on PTD, which was what is the biggest waste of time? for a newer wholesaler, okay? Steve gave his answer. CJ gave his answer. And my answer was cold calling. You should not mm -hmm. cold call when you are a new wholesaler. I was like, we have things like Speed to Lead, like Lead Zolo, where you can go swipe a card and for the exact same amount of money that it cost you to generate a lead cold calling, you could have it inbound. And now instead of getting your teeth kicked in, and wrong phone numbers and wasting all this time, you could only be talking to motivated sellers. And dude, they wholeheartedly and adamantly disagreed with me and called me an idiot. It's literally on the intro of the show. You watch the intro tomorrow. You will hear it at the end where they go, whatever you do, don't listen to RJ. He's so wrong on this. That's okay? awesome. You know what I did? The next day, I came right here. I turned on my red lights because I was angry. And I said, I call, I named the video, stop cold calling. And I said, I don't give yep. a shit what they say. Stop cold calling. They're wrong. And I backed it up with facts, not feelings, facts, numbers, KPIs. This is the reason why you've got to stop doing that. That's why I love this shit because it's like, nah, dude, Damn. I don't want to sit in the silence and not act like I don't have competitors. I don't want to not talk about it. No, I got competitors. I know who they are. I know that I disagree with a lot of what they do. And that's where you make a decision. Do you want to do business with me? It's just the same thing with you. Hey, do you want to do business with Speed Lead? Because we're the first PPL provider that now has provided a way for you to dispo deals. 
What is the number one complaint people have about PPL? I get a lead and bump up nowhere, and I don't know what to do with it. How do I dispo it? You solved it. I mean, Dude, how many times have you? How many times have you gotten asked that question, Gene? What do I do when I go get this lead in the middle of nowhere? How do I? How do I sell it? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, it happens all the time, and and some people walk by those marketplace leads that are, they're probably great leads, and like they are. That's why. That's why I love it when on the show we have a chance where where you can grab one of them, um, and then you know you start calling it, and like, hey, you know what? It's comparable. Like this comps. So if there's comps, that that means like, hey, if there's if there's sold comps, you can sell the thing. So, Gene, which, part which, of my way, closing, which, part of my closing yeah. process in the past has been I've literally teach this. Seller answers the phone. I copy and paste the address. I put it in a Google Street View just to make sure I could see what I'm buying, right? Is there something across the street that I don't want? Is it falling down? What does it look like? Mm -hmm. Guess what the second thing I do is? I put that address in the investor lift to see how many buyers I have. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Yeah. With Speed to Lead, I wouldn't have to do that because you have it inside of the platform. It would already tell you how many buyers you have, correct? You. <laughs> You just you just told me what to do here. So we're going to have that next to each lead. This is awesome. Yeah. I mean, dude, <laughs> it's literally the, it's the thing. I mean, it's like. I'm going to put your face on there. We're going to put your face <laughs> on that feature. We're going to put your face on that flag that says how many buyers are on this platform. Dude, literally, if, if you did this on Speed Lead, put a Google Street View, Okay. Put a little widget right there where I can spin <laughs> around and I can see what does my street look like. Okay, street we can't do because people will figure out the address. You have no idea. People. No, are no, no. I'm talking about after you bought the lead. Oh, after you bought it. Oh, oh, oh I see. I see. I'm talking about after before I'm you bought it. We're, we're gonna we're gonna show you how many buyers you have before you bought. But I'm, but I'm talking about after I buy it. Okay, I've got mm -hmm. the address. I got all the information, so I, I don't see. have to go anywhere outside of the platform. Google Street View. Thank you. How many buyers yes. do I have? And then. I'm comping it. That's all I'm doing. That's it. That's all Dude, of my that's... actions that I'm taking. The only other tab that I would need open would be my contract. This is incredible. Contract to DocuSign. That's it. That's my entire po people. Have... Gene, do you know how many times I've had people ask me to share my screen just so they can see what tabs I have open? Yeah. yeah. Those, those are the tabs that I need right there. I need Google Street View. I need to know how many buyers I have, and then I need to be able to comp the property. That I need to send a contract. I, I close the deal straight from that, man. This is like, that's why I'm saying right here for me, the relationship that I have with you guys, because this is not the first time we've had this type of conversation. It's funny. It's happening on a podcast, but repeatedly we have come to you guys and said, Hey, if we could do this. This would make the platform better. And you're one of the few people that's like, got it. And then the next thing you know, it's like a week later, it's like in the platform where I'm like, holy shit, you're actually listening. Like, you're not a wholesaler. You're, you're, Never you're done a, a deal. Business, Never done a right? single one. And that's what I'm saying. I've always said it where it's like, hey, vendors, listen to your clients. We're the, we're the ones in the trenches actually needing this help. So let me ask you this. We'll, we'll wrap up here in a second because we're approaching an hour, but. Moving forward, what is your what is your vision with Speed to Lead? Where do you want to take this? I mean, is this this is the end game for you, or is there something bigger and better that you want to do? Uh, so we're not thinking about anything else but becoming uh, an ecosystem where people can be productive and make money. Um, and so, you know, we we just had a dispo where we have a few users on there now. Uh, depending on when when someone's listening to this, you know. But we're we're gonna have a big launch, um, and so we're, that's there. Uh, we're adding CRM features that are gonna make it easier for somebody that there's a lot of people that doesn't don't even have a CRM, right? There's a lot of new entrants into the into wholesaling all the time. There's new entrants that don't even have any CRM, right? And so we want them to to be able to like you got a lead from us, cool. You got a lead from somewhere else, plug it into the CRM, okay? Um, and then that lead, you'll be able to enrich with information from speed to lead, like buyers, um, that you wouldn't be able to in any CRM that doesn't have 
elite component, right? Uh, and then, and so we're we're also we're we're I, I want to say this we're full speed working uh, on AI, but we're also one hundred percent incredibly skeptical of it. Yeah. So we're trying to come up with a thing where you go in the marketplace on speed to lead, click a button, deal predictor, and it shows you which lead is most likely to close. Like that would be nice. And and we have a, we have data scientists, uh, a couple of data scientists working on that right now. Is it possible? Don't know. Want to try to be skeptical here because like the the AI thing is the new dot com is the new crypto is the new uh whatever the hell man right there's 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 ai yeah like mo- i will say this on, the, stuff on the ai know. side of things man um and specifically with those data scientists i have i've done so many closings and track kpis on that i'd love to tell you some different things that i think could help with that uh prediction nice. um that, okay. that's one of my uh skill sets that i've developed over the years of like yeah knowing dude why do you think i'm able to go inside i can go inside speed lead every single time i've gone live with speed lead i've come out with a signed contract not a verbal a signed contract it's the only platform that i could say that about in existence there is no other platform that i've ever gone live every single time and gotten a signed contract and why is that because of the data that you've provided me and because of the skill set that I've developed over the years of knowing this is a person that wants to sell me a house right now because of the information that you show me. The other thing is, is going back to what we were talking about with the buyers on the lead. I need you to break that down into two different categories. Okay. This is important. When you say buyers, it needs to be buyers by the city and buyers by the county. And here's the reason why you need to separate that because in a rural location, if you say there are buyers in the city, it could say there's 10 buyers. But then you go by the county and it could say there's 3,000 buyers. Good. And what will happen is, is majority of people would pass on that lead because they would say, oh, there's no buyers there. What they're not realizing is, is that is a high, highly desirable location because to the county buyers – What's probably happening is, is they don't ever see leads and they don't ever get wholesale deals in that location. And so that's one of our hacks right there is that we go get deals in locations where there's quote unquote, no buyers, but there are buyers. They're just looking in the wrong place. Um, So that's important uh, to separate that by city and county. All right. Well, there you go, guys. Not only did you hear Gene's story, but you saw some uh, some new features going to be added to the platform. This there. is it's going to be on the platform probably by the time this thing comes out. <laughs> I don't know, bro. It's going out today. It's okay, coming out right. today. I don't know. If, I don't know. If you're gonna all right, it won't. <laughs> I mean, your company is called Speed Elite. I don't know if you're that fast on it. <laughs> uh, but man, uh, I appreciate you coming on here. And, and honestly, dude, uh, so much. Uh, for what you do for the community. Um, and, and I will say, sometimes people give you a hard time because you have no problem calling people out. Um, you're a little spicy like me. Uh, and and some people, they don't understand us. That's why um, we gel okay. You know, that's why we I, gel well. I, I, I understand you, bro. I, I understand you. Uh, and, and I appreciate what you guys do. And at the end of the day, man, um, you have been – Speed Elite has been such a foundational element for Titanium, um, and I'm looking forward to continue growing. Last thing I'll say is, is man, um, Yuri was such a huge addition to your team, um, and he is amazing for our clients. Uh, I feel like y'all's customer service is second to none um, in this industry, and I think that's spearheaded by Yuri. Um, so – Shout out to Yuri, man. If you've ever talked to him before, he always points people in the right direction, and he's awesome. Uh, Gene, any final words before we sign off? Guys, get leads and listen to RJ, <laughs> and life will be good. There you go. There you go. And I speed appreciate to lead. it. <laughs> yeah, get leads for speed to lead, and then listen to RJ. <laughs>
Um, all right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Gene, appreciate you hopping on here. Guys, make sure to like the video. If you're listening on Apple, make sure you leave us a five-star review. You can leave reviews on Spotify, too. I think we got, like, a few. Leave more. I know you guys are listening. I see the stats. All right, guys. We're out of here. We'll see you guys tomorrow.